All right, what's up everybody? I'm back with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna do a converting the circuit problem. So here we have a and or circuit and we have to convert this and or circuit to only consist of two input NAND gates. All right, now to start off to do this problem, first you have to know what a NAND gate looks like and what it does. So a NAND gate is essentially an AND gate. A NAND gate is essentially an AND gate but it has a bubble inverter at the very end. So this is what it's gonna look like. Let's try and have two inputs, an A and B, and then let's have a resulting letter, let's say it results in F, right? So then for this NAND gate, F only equals to one if both A and B are not one. So A and B both have to be zero. That's the only way F is equal to one, all right? If A and B are both equal to zero, then F is equal to one. In any other scenario, if both of them are one, if A is one or B is one, then this F then results in to zero, right? So the only way F is equal to one is if A and B are both equal to zero, okay? So that's what a NAND gate is and what it looks like. Now, the next thing we have to look at is it says bubbles are not allowed. So basically what it means in this problem is that all the pre-existing bubbles, so these bubbles over here, all those bubbles cannot be there. And bubbles are basically what we call inverters, right? So bubbles are a way to represent inverters. An inverter is basically this. It looks like this. And what an inverter does is it just makes the number opposite. So if there's a zero here, it results in a one. Or if there's a one here, it results in a zero, right? So it just takes the opposite value of whatever number is inputted through once it goes through the inverter as it then makes it the opposite, right? So that's what an inverter is and what these bubbles represent. Now, knowing that, there's one more piece of information that we need to know when we have to convert to NAND gates. If we have an OR gate, right, as we do here, we have an OR gate, and if we have two circle bubbles over here, if we have two circle bubbles on an OR gate, this is equivalent to a NAND gate. A regular NAND gate. So an OR gate with two circle bubbles or inverters at the two inputs is equivalent to a NAND gate. So these are the three pieces of information that we need and the general knowledge that we need to complete this problem. Okay, so now that we know that, let's get right into how to solve this. Okay, so let's just erase all of this stuff so we don't get confused. Right now, let's see how we're going to start. Let's just use different colors. So we're going to divide this into four sections, right? So we're going to divide this into the first section and the third section, right? So we have one and three. Then we have two and four. So basically, as you can see, we divided it into the input and output of the AND gates or the OR gates for that matter. So we have four sections. So all the separation points between the two, between all the gates, so we have the odd and the even sections. So when we do questions like this, we only have to manipulate the odd or the even. We don't do everything, right? So we have to choose whether we want to do odd or even. So in this case scenario, we're going to decide to go with the even side, right? So we're only going to manipulate the second and fourth junctions of this circuit. Now we're going to get into how we're going to change it. So when we get into this, the, way we, the first thing that we do when we try to convert an AND OR to a NAND gate is we're gonna put bubbles at all the outputs and inputs of the gates, right? So we have uh, lines over here that connect to the input and output. We're gonna put inverting bubbles over all of them. And we're gonna do the same thing for the fourth junction as well. So we're gonna put inverting bubbles on every input and output. So as you can see here, we have inverting bubbles on everything, all right? And then now what's the first, that's this rule that we did at the beginning. We can see right here that these two OR gates can automatically come NAND because we added inverting bubbles, right? And the reason why we added to the input and the output of the AND gates or the OR gates is because whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the outside. So if we do something to the output over here, so if we do something to the output over here, we have to do it to the input over here. That's just the basic rule of mathematics that whatever we do to the left side, we have to do to the right side. So that's why we added the inverting bubbles in the output and the input. So based on our rule that we did before, we know that an OR gate, right? We know that an OR gate with two inverting bubbles is equivalent to just a regular NAND gate, right? 
So that's exactly how we got rid of our OR gates right away. So if we line this up over here, right, with, the, with this uh, junction, these two OR gates essentially become NAND gates. So you have a NAND gate over here, and we have a NAND gate over here. So these two ORs become a NAND gate automatically. Now, if we look at this section over here, we see that because we added these inverting bubbles at the output, they essentially become to look like NAND gates, right? And then these inverting bubbles essentially then become inverters, as you can see here. So these inverting bubbles that are here already, they become inverters, but because we added an inverting bubble at the end, these essentially become NAND gates. And the reason why these inverting bubbles are allowed are because they're not pre-existing in the circuit. And also these inverting bubbles are just the generic way of how to draw AND gates as it's the, uh, the generic way of how people associate NAND gates with them, right? So that is part of the design of how the NAND gate is drawn. So as you can see here, we basically have inverting gates for these NAND gates, right? And then we end up having four NAND gates. We end up having four NAND gates, and then there are inverters on some of them, right? So we have two on the bottom for the two inputs. We have one on the second one, and we have one on the first one, right? So that's what the first side of the circuit looks like. So we have these two ORs, with, and we add the two inverting bubbles, and they become NAND gates. Then we add bubbles to the output of these AND gates, and then we change these circles or these bubble inverters into real inverters, and we add NAND gates through all of them, right? And these are just regular inputs, whatever is left, right? So now that we have that, we know what basically this first half of the circuit looks like. Now we have to do the second half of the circuit. So once again, we see this OR here with the two circles. So we know for this section, this is just gonna be a big NAND gate as this is equivalent as it was over here, right? So we know that this final circuit is gonna be a NAND gate. Now, what about these two AND gates over here? We know that these essentially become NAND gates as well, right? Because there's an AND gate and we just added the inverter at the end, but these two inputs are regular, but this input has a bubble inverter. So then instead for this input, we have to put another regular inverter over here to make it make sense where there's no bubbles allowed, right? So now we have two more NAND gates associated over here. And then now this inverter is placed in front of this first input for the top AND gate. So then it all makes sense and it doesn't change the output that is resulted from this circuit. So basically, essentially what we're doing for this circuit is very simple. So basically what we have to do is basically change these AND to NANDs, which is relatively simple. We just add a bubble at the end. But the real trick is to remember that these OR gates with these two bubbles are equivalent to the NAND gates and we have to convert them, right? So that's the main trick that we have to make sure to do. And that's why we essentially chose the second and the fourth junction to work with, because that is what would make it the most simplest as we can just put the bubbles at the OR gates and convert them to NAND gates easily, all right? So then I know this uh, it's a very easy example. If you guys want to do another one, I can do an XOR example or whatever other circuit you guys want me to convert. So if you have any other circuits you want me to convert, please comment down below or send me an email at shareanacademy at gmail.com. I'll make sure to make another video on it uh, as soon as possible, right? So essentially, this is what a circuit looks like. And then right now, I'm going to attach what the full circuit is supposed to be look like uh, with the whole design below and we can take a look at compare them. Okay, so as you can see here, we have this fully drawn out circuit now. And as you can see here, we have our four NAND gates and we have the inverter and these two inverters at the bottom and in this one, as you can see, if you follow the actual line of the circuit, we have B as the input over here and this is connected to this inverter, right? And this also goes down and connects to this inverter. Then we have A coming down and connects to this inverter. So as you can see here, if we follow this, we have A the inverter comes and it comes all the way down here. Then we have B as the inverter connects to this one, but it also has a line down coming down to here. So that therefore we get all the inverters necessary as A also connects to the first NAND gate on the top. So as you can see our first uh, row or column of NAND gates is correct as all our inverters are in place with the circuit drawn and all the inputs are designed to enter the right NAND gates as you can see down below. Now in the next section, you can see our two OR gates over here with after adding the inverting bubbles are then converted into these two NAND gates, which are correct. And as you can see here, we have our two AND gates, right? So these two NAND gates are created and the inverting bubble that is over here from input number C, as you can see C here, if you follow it, it goes and it has an inverting right inverter over here, which in turn becomes one of the outputs for the NAND gate. 
and but for the other one the c value is just a regular one so if we follow the c it comes down and there's no inverter that is needed as it's just a regular input as if we have over here right so these two and gates become the nand gates and we have one of the inverters that are needed for the input and then these last or gate with the two inverting bubbles at the end are then placed on this so then therefore we have our NAND gate to finish it off right and then we have F as our output to result in the same result as the previous circuit but now we're just using NAND gates instead of AND and OR gates right so essentially if I can erase this real quick essentially this is what our final circuit should look like with the correct format of only using two input NAND gates with no inverting bubbles allowed as we can use inverters however so these inverters kind of replace the inverting bubbles that are needed for this circuit to work. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and understood what I was talking about. Please make sure to like, comment, and share as well as subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please make sure to comment down below if you have any questions or concerns. If you guys want me to cover any specific topics or problems that you guys want me to make videos on, please comment down below or email me at shareanacademy at gmail.com and I'll make sure to make a video on it as soon as possible. So once again guys, thanks for watching if you guys stuck through the whole thing. Hope you guys understood this video um, and I'll see you guys next time.